Sheila Gunn Reed for Rebel News in Surrey, British Columbia, home of the infamous litigious, violent transgender activist Jonathan Yaniv. Now, as you'll recall, Yaniv is most famous for terrorizing vulnerable immigrant esthetician women by first tricking them into thinking that he was hilariously a biological woman and then by hammering these ladies with human rights complaints when they refused either out of religious objections or safety objections or because they simply didn't know how to wax his male genitals. He's the wax my balls guy. I'm at the courthouse today because Yaniv had a court appearance for his two charges of possession of a prohibited weapon. Now the charges were laid because in front of the entire world, Yaniv showed off his taser in a YouTube live stream debate with YouTuber Blair White in August 2019. Remember this? I'm going to talk, which is illegal in Canada, just saying. But after executing a warrant in August, police found two conductive energy devices in Yaniv's home. They're both prohibited weapons here in Canada. Now, this is what I can tell you about court today. Yaniv has hired a lawyer, Andrew Coulthard, who appeared on his behalf in courtroom 100 at 10 a.m. Yaniv's lawyer asked that the case be put over for disposition March 16th, 2020. And that could mean a few different things. However, I also heard Yaniv's lawyer say that he and the Crown were discussing a quote resolution to the case. So after court, I sought some legal advice of my own from our Vancouver based lawyers who are assisting us in navigating this enormous legal spider web. Yaniv is just spinning around himself with all of his charges and constant court appearances. Now here's what our lawyer explained to me. It sounds like there are plea deal discussions taking place and this thing with Yaniv and the charges for prohibited weapons might not be going to trial at all, which is not all that unusual, but we can't be sure until after we see what takes place in the courthouse behind me, March 16th. So I'll be back here in three weeks to make sure that whatever happens with the charges Yaniv is facing now and in the future, it won't be done in secrecy or buried by mainstream media that just wants to ignore this whole entire freak show. This morning, I hopped an early morning flight to Vancouver. I hired two really incredible security professionals and headed to the Surrey courthouse. Yaniv has assaulted two of my colleagues in the past, both times on camera. David Menzies was hit with a pink cane and Kean Bexy was punched here at the courthouse. Rebel News is not taking any chances with my safety. And these security pros were very needed the first time I met Yaniv and his wild eyed mom who lunged at me like an animal on the courthouse sidewalk. Here, take a look at what happened when I first met the Yaniv family. Jonathan, are you going to plead guilty to assaulting my colleague, mm -hmm. Kian Bexty? Rebel media. Rebel media. Hey! No, no. Go, okay, keep you your hands off whoa, me. Whoa, whoa. You go are you going to plead guilty whoa. for assaulting my colleague, Kian Bexty? Jonathan! Are you going to plead guilty no, for assaulting my mouth. colleague, Kian don't Bexty? Don't Jonathan, are you going to plead guilty to the weapons charges against you? Isn't it incredible how fast Jonathan Yaniv went from rolling around British Columbia in a scooter to booking it away from me? Now at Rebel News, we are incurring so many costs because of Jonathan Yaniv. Two security guys every time I come here, flights from Edmonton every time I come here, and a Vancouver-based law firm on standby in case the sheriffs try to keep me out of the courthouse like they did to Kean. I know it sounds so crazy, but this is what we have to do just to do journalism without being assaulted or banned. No other media company has to go through any of this. Yet CBC <laughs> talks themselves up as simultaneous victims and heroes <laughs> when they are able to keep talking when someone stands in their shot or, so, or shouts something vulgar at them. We get assaulted with steel canes, punched by male feminists, shoved by union activists and the police. Well, they don't really seem to give a damn. Or in the case of David Menzies, the cops are the ones doing the roughing up. And in the case of Ezra Levant, the cops stepped in to protect a confessed Al Qaeda terrorist from questions about his airline travel in a Canadian airport. Friends, we have filed a lawsuit against Jonathan Yaniv for assaulting Kian and David, and that is going to cost us at least $50,000. I know 
that's another thing that sounds absolutely crazy, but it's less crazy than allowing Jonathan Yaniv and his enabling maniacal mom to continue their reign of terror. The cops aren't doing anything, so we must. You can see the details of our lawsuit and support our lawsuit at yanivtrial.com. Do you think the CBC would ever report on Jonathan Yaniv the way we are? I've been here three times and they haven't even been here once because they're too scared, too politically correct, or too disinterested in the real story to report on Jonathan Yaniv, despite the incredible international interest in this case. You can help cover the cost for us to do accountability journalism on the ground on Jonathan Yaniv at yanivtrial.com. For Rebel News, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. I had to fly out to Surrey, British Columbia this morning, hire two security guards and a lawyer just to be safe enough to cover Jonathan Yaniv's court appearance, to help cover the cost to send me here and to support our lawsuit against the public menace of Jonathan Yaniv, please go to yanivtrial.com.